Good morning, students. Myself, Kaushik Ghos, your physical science teacher. Today's video lesson is for class 10. The chapter today we are going to discuss is thermal phenomena. I have divided this chapter in two modules. We will discuss module 1 today. Let's start. What is thermal expansion? The change in dimension of a substance on heating is called the thermal expansion of that substance. You must be thinking, what do I mean by change in dimension? Well, my dear students, as you know that length, breadth and height, these are known as dimensions of a substance. That means if on heating the length or breadth or height of a substance increases then that is called thermal expansion. So either there can be increase in length or increase in length and breadth that is surface area or there can be increase in length, breadth and height that is volume of a substance on heating. So due to heating, if there is any increment in the length or in surface area or in the volume of a substance, then that is called the thermal expansion of that substance. And as these expansions are happening because of the therm means heat, the name is given thermal expansion. Here I have given some daily life examples from which you can understand the application of thermal expansion here. Well, in the very first, as you can see here, here. In case of a clinical thermometer, the mercury inside it expands when the thermometer comes in contact with the body of a person having high fever. This all of us have seen. You have also seen a small gap here, as you can see here, in the red lines after a regular interval of distance. On hot summer day, the red lines expand and tend to increase in length. Means if there is no gap, what will happen? The rails tend to bend sidewise due to expansion and this may cause derailment. So the gap which is given here, this gap accommodates the increased length of the railway line and prevents it from bending. Also, during the construction of a bridge, steel structures are used. At one end, this structure is fixed with the concrete here and on the other end, this structure is supported on rollers. Now, during rise in temperature or on cooling, the structure may increase or decrease in its length. Now, if both the ends are fixed, then expansion will cause damage to the pillars of the bridge. Now, since one end is supported on the roller, so the expansion does not affect the pillars because if there is a uh, small expansion or uh, contraction of the structure, then this structure will roll over the pillar by a little amount with the help of the rollers. So this will not affect the pillars of the bridge. Now we will discuss about the types of the thermal expansion that is the classification of thermal expansion. Well, there are three types of thermal expansions. One, the first one is linear expansion, second one is superficial expansion means the expansion of surface area and the third one is cubical expansion means the expansion of the volume. Now we will discuss these three one by one. First, we will discuss the linear expansion. See what we have taken here, we have taken one rod here 
as you can see whose initial length is l0 and the initial temperature is t0 now what we are doing we are hitting this rod so as a result of this hitting the length of the rod gets increased and let that increase in length be delta l so what is the total length now l0 plus delta l also the temperature rises due to heating and let that rise in temperature be delta t so what is the final temperature t0 plus delta t here i have shown you one small calculation here see i have taken that rod of initial length l0 i have given it heat so the length increases by an amount delta l and the temperature rises by an amount delta t now this change in length delta l is directly proportional to both these initial length and the rise in temperature so delta l is proportional to l0 into delta t now we all know that if i want to remove this proportional sign and make it an equal sign i have to put one constant here so i have taken alpha here so it, what is coming delta l is equal to alpha into l0 into delta t this alpha is known as the coefficient of linear expansion now from this equation i can easily get the value of l by taking the l0 on right hand side so it will become as l0 into 1 plus alpha into delta t the coefficient of linear expansion now we will define this coefficient of linear expansion so we know this equation delta l is equals to alpha l0 delta t now in this equation if i take l0 equals to 1 cm delta t equals to 1 degree centigrade then delta l becomes equal with alpha that means coefficient of linear expansion of a substance is the change in length relative to its original length at 0 degree centigrade per unit change in temperature is basically it is the rise in length per unit original length per unit change of temperature and the unit of coefficient of linear expansion in SI system it is Kelvin inverse or 1 by Kelvin and in non SI system of unit we write it degree centigrade inverse or 1 by degree centigrade. The next topic which we will discuss is superficial expansion that is the expansion of the surface area. So there is increase in the surface area of, of a substance due to heating and that is known as superficial expansion. As you can see in this diagram the surface area got heated equally uniformly and as a result of that this is the new area which is formed with the dotted lines it is shown here. About the coefficient of surface expansion that is superficial expansion for this see this is the a square which we have taken initially now we are hitting this square and as a result of this this hitting this increment in the area is shown by the yellow color region let the initial area be a0 and the final area be at so what is the change in area at minus a0 now the coefficient of linear expansion uh, as it was alpha here coefficient of superficial expansion we are giving it name beta so beta is increase in area by original area into rise in temperature in case of linear expansion it was increased in length by original length into rise in temperature similarly here superficial expansion coefficient will be equal to increase in area divided by original area into rise in temperature okay so it is defined as the increase in surface area per unit original surface area per unit degree rise in temperature so if i make it one if i make original area one and rise in temperature one then i will get beta is equal to increase in area so from this we are defining as the increase in surface area per unit original area per unit degree rise in temperature and units of beta that is the coefficient of superficial expansion it is same as the unit of 
coefficient of linear expansion. Next one is the cubical expansion or what we say is volume expansion. It is increasing the volume of a substance due to heating. That means in this case, all the three dimensions increase by heating. As you can see, I have taken one cube here and this cube is heated uniformly. So its length, breadth and height, all these three dimensions increase. And as a result of that, its volume increases. And the new volume here is shown by the dotted lines. From here, this is the initial volume V0 and the increment in the volume, let it be delta V. So this increment in the volume, increase in volume is directly proportional to the initial volume V0 and rise in temperature delta T, similar way as we have discussed in the linear expansion or superficial expansion. So one constant is here, this gamma. This gamma is known as the coefficient of cubical expansion. And gamma is written as delta V divided by V0 into delta T. Okay, means if I take V0 equals to 1 and delta T equals to 1, see, gamma becomes equal with delta V. That means increase in volume per unit original volume. If V0 becomes 1 means unit original volume. And if delta T becomes 1 means per unit rise in temperature. So coefficient of volume expansion is defined as the increase in volume per unit original volume per unit rise in temperature. And its unit is also similar like alpha and beta. That is in SI system of unit, it is Kelvin inverse or 1 by Kelvin. And in non-SI system of units, that is degree centigrade inverse or 1 by degree centigrade next topic this one i have uh, just the uh, summarized the coefficients expressions of coefficients as you can see the coefficient linear expansion coefficient delta l by l into 1 by delta t where delta l is the change in length l is the original length and 1 by delta t delta t is the rise in temperature Similarly, coefficient of superficial expansion beta, delta A by A into 1 by delta T. Delta A is the increase in surface area divided by original surface area into 1 by rise in temperature. And coefficient of volume expansion, which is expressed in terms of gamma, it is written as delta V by V into 1 by delta T, where delta V is the increase in the volume, V is the original volume, and delta T is the rise in temperature. And if, the, if these coefficients, there is a ratio between these coefficients, if we take the ratio of the three expansion coefficient, we will get alpha is to beta is to gamma equals to one is to two is to three. It means there's a ratio of alpha, beta and gamma where beta is equal to two alpha and gamma is equals to three alpha. This derivation is not in your syllabus. So you will just remember this ratio alpha is to beta is to gamma is 1 is to 2 is to 3. Moving on to the next topic, expansion of liquid. Well, liquids as we know have no definite shapes of their own and take the shape of the container means in whichever container you will keep that uh, liquid, it will take that container's shape. Now from this, this thermal expansion which is occurring in the liquid is always cubical because of this expansion of the container the thermal expansion of the liquid is always cubical so when heated along with the liquid the volume of the container will also increase because only liquid you cannot heat so for heating the liquid you need to take the liquid in a container and you have to heat that container so while heating that container the volume of the liquid as well as the container increases. Now what is happening due to that? Because initially when the uh, heat is given, due to increase in the volume of the container, the level of the liquid decreases. So the apparent expansion of the liquid will be equal to the real expansion of the liquid minus the volume expansion of the container. Expansion of gases. Well, among the states of matter, 
gas suffers maximum expansion due to increase in temperature by a definite amount. Means if equal uh, heat is given to a solid, liquid and gas, that gas suffers maximum expansion. Here, simple example is given here as you can see. The air which is near the earth surface, near the ground, gets heated by the sun heat and as a result of that, its temperature increases. So density decreases, it becomes lighter, it moves up. And when it moves up, here the temperature is comparatively lower. So it cools and it sinks, density increases, it becomes heavier, so it goes down. Again, that air comes here, again the same process is followed. So like this, a cyclic process goes on, which forms the convection current. Now this is the last topic where we have derived Charles law from this volume expansion. See, this is the equation, you know, what we know from the volume expansion. The final volume is initial volume into 1 plus gamma t, where gamma is the coefficient of volume expansion. And from Charles law, what we know, at constant pressure, the volume of a given mass of an ideal gas increases by a constant fraction. That is 1 by 273 of its volume at 0 degree centigrade means if volume at 0 degree centigrade is V0 then the volume increases by V0 by 273 when for each degree Celsius rise in temperature means if the initial volume of a gas at 0 degree centigrade is V0 at constant pressure if I increase the temperature of the gas by 1 degree centigrade then its volume will increase by V0 by 273. We have studied uh, this thing earlier. So from this value of gamma for an ideal gas is 1 by 273. So see here it's written Vt equals to V0 into 1 plus gamma t put the value of gamma that is t by 273. Now simple calculation if we do here we'll get V0 into t plus 273 divided by 273. Now 273 plus t that becomes the absolute temperature which is written as capital T. So Vt becomes equal with V0 T by 273. So from here we can say that this volume is directly proportional to absolute temperature. Well, this is for the study this chapter from your textbook thoroughly. Go through these video lessons twice or thrice and i'll be back very soon with the second module till then stay home stay safe goodbye